Meanwhile, Tasmanians head to the polls a week from Saturday for their state election. Let's get the latest with David Killick, senior reporter at the Mercury. David, the first of the leaders' debate to be held today. What should we expect to be covered? What's dominating during the election campaign? Thanks, Kieran. Great to be with you. The issues that have dominated the election campaign so far have been the um, issues that have become familiar to Tasmanians. It's the state's health system. It's the housing crisis. It's education, but uh, especially it's cost of living. And that's the ground that we expect the leaders to cover. In the last few days, the campaign's been very heavily focused on housing. Um, we've had leaders out in hard hats on just about every building site in Hobart and uh, the media following faith were in their wake. So it's going to be interesting to see um, what dominates. We're expecting a very strong focus on health in particular in the last week and a half of the campaign. Yeah, that's been a, a big issue for a number of years in Tasmania, health. The other matter, cost of living, it's something that we're seeing right around the country, but it's burning right now in Tasmania too, David. That's right. Housing costs in particular. Um, Tasmania had a reputation as a low-cost state. Um, housing was always a little bit cheaper here, and that offset for the fact that wages generally were a little lower. In recent years, the cost of housing has gone up, but wages haven't kept pace and people are feeling the pinch from that. In addition, uh, particularly in Hobart, there's been a rental crisis with vacancy rates of less than 1%. So people are finding it not only harder, but more expensive to find somewhere to live. When you look at the polling, it suggests a hung parliament is the most likely scenario. Is that your read of things right now? And who would be the favourite to form government? And look, it hasn't a bit over changed. Um, the, 10 days the out. Latest Sorry, it hasn't changed. The latest polling um, has been released by the Australia Institute that was conducted by UCOMS, and it's showing that the Liberals are on 37%. So obviously that places them in the in, with the most votes, but not necessarily with a majority um, under the Hare Clark system. Labor's coming in at 23%, the Greens at 13. That'll that'll be a bit different. Um, the Liberals are stronger in the states north and northwest in the seats of Bass and Braddon. Um, Labor's traditionally strongest in Clark. So it'll be interesting to see how things pan out. At the moment, the predictions are that the Liberals will take anything up to about 14 seats in the 35-seat House. Labor looking at 10 or 11. So there'll be no clear winner. And whoever wants to form government is going to have to form some sort of coalition or um, do a deal with right. some of the minor parties. And that's really where the political debate has been in the last few days of who might do a deal with whom. And in that context, how does the Lambie, uh, Jackie Lambie effect play out at the state level? It's going to be particularly interesting. The predictions are that Lambie Network candidates could take two or possibly even three seats. Um, they're untested uh, in an election like this. With 35 seats, the quotas are a bit lower. So um, everyone's trying to predict how they would, um, how, how things would pan out. As with their policies, they're saying they have an open mind on who they might back um, when it comes to the post-election shakeout period. So I think, um, you know, as with their stance on issues from health and housing and cost of living, we're going to have to wait to see after the election exactly um, where these where these candidates um, stand. David Killick, Senior Reporter at the Mercury. Appreciate your time as always. Thanks. Great to be with you.